Hello and welcome to Cracking the Cryptic. Now I'm going to have a look at the instruction booklet for the World Sudoku Championship for the first time. This is happening in a couple of weeks in Kirchheim, Germany, and they've recently published the instruction book which will tell us all the variants of Sudoku that are being used in the competition. I haven't looked at this, so let's see what we're going to get. Um, or not, when I say what we're going to get, I'm not going to the competition, so let's have a look at what the participants are going to get. So, here we go. Let's just try and get this up. So, the competition takes place over two days. Looks like there are 13 rounds, of which three are team rounds. Um, countdown classics. I mean, I don't think the... Um, names of the rounds necessarily tell us much but you can see that the first day's rounds are over a total of what looks like about is that six hours certainly over five and then on day two slightly shorter just goes until 2 30 and there's about two and a half hours of competition there so plenty of sudoku to do to try and win the World Sudoku Championship. Um, my own form has been such that if I was half the points in a round would be a reasonable score and sometimes I'd get more than that. Very rarely would I complete a round, although they do set up some short rounds sometimes that are just possible. Um, here's all the rules. Lots of uh, rules. You can look them up if you want to. Ooh, what's this? Sudoku World Cup. This year's World Sudoku Championship will include a separate tournament, the Sudoku World Cup, which I think is the team tournament. And then the team scores will be made up of all the individual scores plus the scores for the three team rounds. Oh no, the Sudoku World Cup replaces the individual playoffs from previous years. It starts with three regular puzzle rounds. After the first round, the top 100 competitors advance to round two. And then you have 40 competitors getting through round two and 10 through round three. Good Lord. Okay, I didn't know anything about that. Interesting, and that might actually lead to something we can uh, watch together, which will be quite interesting if they uh, film the... 10 person playoff successfully. Now, oh, sorry, I've jumped over. Right, round one, classics, basically. Nine classics ranging between 20 and 35 points, all fairly similar. 25 minutes to solve nine puzzles maximum. So if you're really good, you'll be going along at better than three minutes average for these puzzles. Now, they've given an example of a classic, but. Um, just one type. Now round two is a World Cup round and we've got some variants called classic 0-9 crop key, anti-clone, consecutive, extra regions, neighbours, odd even stars, scattered and windoku. Some of those we have done on the channel just to see how they work. That's crop key. 0-9 crop key. So the number zero can be used, which is rather surprising. So in the first row of the solution, there's no two, so that's a bit of a tricky one. No wonder that's 70 points, but anti-clone, what does that mean? Anti-clone, digits may not repeat within a dotted outlined area. Digits may also not repeat within dotted outline areas with the same shape. Wow. So those three digits must be different from those three digits. And the four in the square must be different from those four in the square. So, I mean, for instance, you can immediately tell that they must be every number except five, because five is in both of the boxes that those two by two shapes appear in. I've never seen that sort before. Two weird ones to start with. Now, consecutive, all the instances where 
consecutive numbers are in cells next to each other are marked. That's normal. Extra regions. The extra region has one to nine in it. Neighbors. I mean, we could just carry on with these, but uh, odd even stars. I'm not sure what that is. Let's have another quick look at the rules there. If a cell with a star contains an odd digit, all horizontal and vertically adjacent cells contain an even digit, and vice versa. So, so you can tell from that that this row of eight cells in the top row must be or alternating odd and even. So that allows you to know that the final cell in that row must be odd. Cells that are not marked with a star don't have this property. That doesn't mean that this one can't be even, because if that was even, that would make it not a star. I mean, tricky, tricky to sort that one out. Scattered Sudoku, Windoku, we've certainly tried that. So why don't I pick one of these puzzles and try and solve it? You know, I'll set it up for you in our software, and we can both have a go at it. What's this one? Even Sudoku. Gray cells contain even digits, so I'm um, going to have a go at that. So here we go. I've loaded the puzzle up. Remember, the instructions are that the gray cells have to be even. Um, and remember, this is only an example puzzle. This isn't the actual puzzle that um, contestants will get. So we've got... Let's do some normal Sudoku with a bit of Snyder notation first. Eight in the first box must be in one of those two cells. So these two eights, similarly down the same set of boxes. Two is restricted. Five has to be there or there. Seven can only be there or there. It can't be here because that has to be even. Eight down here is pointing up at this pattern up here. So has to be in one of those two cells. Um, eight down here has to be in row nine. Two, anything else? No. Oh, two is also pointing at that pattern. So two has to be in one of those. Um, so it's not much else to be gained immediately from standard Sudoku. So let's have a look at the grey cells. Now, this one's interesting. It's even because it's grey, but it can't be two in the same column, four in the same row, or eight in the same box. So the only even possibility left is a six. So that makes this one a four, two and eight in the same column. Um, that's going to restrict fours over here and sixes. Six could be in any of the middle cells there. Now, any other even boxes being pointed at? Well, well in the central box, the two grey cells have to be two and eight, as four and six already appear. And in fact, that eight resolves which way round they go. So this is probably... It's beginning to look like a reasonably straightforward example of this genre, if you like. Uh, six, eight. Well, having said that, I don't know quite. Ah, oh, yes, that eight has resolved where eight goes down there. Eight up here can't be in the central cell, despite it being an even, because of eight having to be over here in the in row two. So eight's in one of those two, and in fact that makes this grey cell a six. This one has to be a two. Again, one in the row, one in the column, one in the box. Um, two down here must be in one of those. And two up here must be there. So six has to be here. got a lot of sixes placed now we may be able to finish off all the sixes in the puzzle there they go hmm. 
Still got a few gray squares to fill. This one has to be four, this one has to be two. They come together pretty easily. This one must be four. This one, however, could still be two or eight. Not sure which one it's gonna be out of those. Um, ah, yes, we do know. Eight in row six, eight in row four. The only place left for row five, eight, is in fact in that one. So we've finished all the grey cells. So the constraints are all over now. And the rest of it is just regular Sudoku, um, which is just a real, I guess, a practice session to see how we go with a regular puzzle from this point. And um, it doesn't look all that difficult, to be fair. So again, it's just a case of getting one's head around the constraint fairly early in this, on this occasion. Um, 9, 4, 5, 8, six, okay, 7 and 9 to be placed in the central column there. That puts 1 and 3 in the other cells in the box. Got two, nine, and seven to place. The only place for a two now in row five is at the beginning. Um, and in fact, yeah, seven and nine in the other two cells, but we can't resolve those yet. Nine in row four, in column four, must be down there. Ah, oh, four has to be here. I think that's the last four we need to place. Can't be here, and two is therefore up here. So I think we've got all the even numbers in the grid now. Everything we could possibly do. Um, so it's just odds left to go at this point. Probably missing. Oh yes, three has to be here for column one and indeed here because of these two cells being a one three pair um how are we doing it so three must now be in one of those cells and that fixes the three nine pair at the top it's a nine now that resolves the seven nine pair in the central box one and a five still to go no don't know which way around they are Let's come down here. No, four, six, eight, five, two, nine. One of these is a seven. It must be this one because of that seven, obviously. Um, one and three to place along the bottom row. Six, three, eight. One of those is a seven. Okay, seven and nine, which we needed in row five, they're now resolved by this nine having been fixed up there. So now we can finish off this box. Um, doesn't quite resolve that pair at the top yet, but we can finish off all the boxes in the bottom section. And that takes us to the last remaining boxes in the middle. That must be a five, one and three have been resolved. One and seven to go in there. Five and seven up there, and one cell to finish, it's a five. Let's just check that's right, and all the gray cells are completed with even numbers. So that's a pretty straightforward example, as I say. It is only an example, the puzzle in the actual competition will probably be harder than that one, but it's just to give competitors an idea of the type of constraint and how it operates and to make sure they've understood the rules. That's why the solutions are given next to the puzzles so you can just check off that you're doing it right. Um, might have a look at some of the other puzzles in the set um, in further videos. Let us know if you'd be interested in that or indeed if you'd be interested in us covering the competition as it occurs um, over the rest of the month. And thanks very much for watching. Do please subscribe to the channel, certainly if you want to keep on top of the World Today Good Championship. And uh, 
feel free to sponsor us on Patreon if you can manage that. That would be great. Thank you very much for watching. See you again soon on Cracking the Cryptic. Bye for now.